Today you may take this turn on William Street in Glastonbury and pay no attention to the soap factory condos, but they have a rich history that's lathered over the entire country. It was founded by J.B. Williams. He was perplexed by something most of us don't think too much about, why there was so much variety in the texture and usage of soap. To help us tell this story, we went to Diane Hoover, a Glastonbury native who spent 41 years as a history teacher in the school department and is now at the Historical Society of Glastonbury. She says Williams, tired of living in Lebanon, dropped out of school at 16 years old and later he'd teach himself chemistry, all with the desire to create the perfect soap. It wouldn't stay foamy on a man's face, so he wanted to do that. And he really worked on that. Williams honed his formula at an apothecary in Manchester, but he had to move his business to Glastonbury. It's sort of how companies these days relocate for tax breaks. Well, in this case, William moved his soap factory to this building because of water power. Glastonbury had some of the best water power east of the Connecticut River. This water wheel was already here, and with two cauldrons and a team of seven, Williams set up shop here in 1849. Soaps were pounded by hand, cut into sheets, and then cooled for two months. From the beginning to the end, he was supervising the process. Williams started small with genuine Yankee soap. Just they'd call a local, or they'd contact a local farmer to come originally with a wagon and horses to then bring it to markets and the markets would be in Hartford and eventually down to the docks to go to different ports around the area. Williams would toil away for more than 20 years while expanding his line of products to include soaps and stick, powder and liquid form. He and his employees worked from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. during summer, an hour for lunch, six days a week, 7 a.m. to 4.30 in winter. Outside of work, Williams endured many personal heartbreaks. Seven of his 15 children died at a young age. So-and-so aged three months, 19 days, four months, five years old, 114. Yet Williams never lost sight of his goal, and in 1876, he made his mark at a Philadelphia Expo where he handed out samples. His soaps soon went national. The soap was in every major city in the country and in Canada, and they were starting to go internationally. Williams continued to innovate from Glastonbury and was a master at adjusting to the times. Even after his death, the company was still on the cutting edge. When the electric razor was invented at the turn of the century, aqua velva was not far behind. People who have grandparents who have lived and had aqua velva can remember that smell. Williams was a pioneer in soap making, but he also broke gender barriers. This group of women were some of the first ever hired to work in a factory. Given the jobs, gentle jobs of wrapping the soaps and so forth. But it was interesting to note that it was one of the first in the nation that did it. The soap factory that started with seven eventually had 230 employees. Three generations of Williams ran the business before selling to a pharmaceutical company in New Jersey. The factory ceased operations in the 1970s and was eventually converted to the condos we see today. For all who live here, it's a reminder of Glastonbury's place in American history. It was effective. It was good soap. He created the perfect soap. If you'd like to learn more about the factory or the town in general, you're going to want to come here to the Historical Society on Main Street. Right in its backyard, there's also the Williams family gravestones. We're here in Glastonbury tonight. Matthew Campbell, Channel 13 News.